Um, so I'd like to open the meeting. It's uh, 6.02. Um, are there any adjustments to the select board agenda? I have nothing. Okay. All right. Any public comment? All right. Hearing none, um, uh, I'd like to make a motion that we approve the bills to the town. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And then I would like to make a motion that we approve the minutes for the um, May 25th, or actually May 27th, uh, 2020 select board meeting and the uh, May 29th um, special select board meeting. I'll second that. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. So minutes are approved. So um, let's move on to the town highway report. And the first thing that I'd like to do before we forget is to establish the road commissioner's pay rate, which, okay. um, which due to my own fault, we have missed uh, doing the last two meetings, um, but we need to do it in a, in a public meeting. We did come to an agreement um, during the interview in executive session with Chuck, but um, okay. we should um, make sure that we do it in a public meeting. So it was my okay. understanding that we would be paying our road commissioner $20 an hour um, plus uh, mileage. Correct. 55 right. cents a mile. All right. So is, um, and Chuck, is that, is that, Ring to true to your memory. His microphone's Hello? off. Your mic's off, Chuck. Okay. Um, I'm having. I can't get for some reason. Zoom isn't letting me join the call. I'm having to do it on the phone, and I'm not sure why. Okay. I'm on the phone also. Uh, maybe Leaf could could address that. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Uh, Here we go. I can hear you, Chuck. I yeah. Can hear you now, yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes, that rings oh. a bell. I... Okay. I guess I'm on. You're on. Okay. I wish I was. <laughs> so I'd, I'd like I'd like to make a motion um, that we that, that we set the pay rate for the road commissioner at twenty dollars an hour uh, plus mileage. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Good. So um, uh, next on the agenda is just to go over the job description for um, both the road commissioner and the road foreman. Um, and I, I apologize, Paul, for not reviewing the draft that you sent. Um, That's okay. There are a couple things that I noticed in, in looking at it just before the meeting. Um, one is that um, on the responsibilities uh, number six, I thought we were going to have the um, just the road crew that we were going to strike that, that where it says schedules winter maintenance to ensure roads are always maintained in a safe and usable condition. Um, okay, I didn't have that on my notes. Okay, um, well that that was part of the discussion um, at our last select board meeting to that because Chuck would be gone for most of the winter that the sure. road crew would just Yeah, because the gap we were trying to fill was just making sure that maintenance was happening, I think from our uh, winter policy is 5 a.m. until 8 p.m. So we yeah. need to have make sure that's happening, whether it's the road foreman seeing to that or it's the road commissioner. Yep, I agree, yep. And then the other part um, that we had talked about at the last select board meeting is to add, um, to actually to take an item off the road foreman's uh, job description, which is assisting the select board in the preparation of the annual town highway budget and moving that over to the road commissioner. That would be one of- So we would want to add that one. Yeah, we wanted to add that. Okay, because I had combined two, so I will put that on there. Okay, all right. Um, and then there's a part, um, and you know, I'm kind of fine with it the way it is, but I'm, I'm wondering if it would be a little bit confusing based on our conversation at the last select like, board meeting is in the uh, job summary part, the last paragraph um, where it says um, the road commissioner is responsible for, for various administrative duties. Um, and then there are a couple overseeing the work 
of the highway department and then including payroll records and budget oversight we had decided um, that we would pretty much have the road foreman continue to uh, sign off on the timesheets and right. um, and the invoices this doesn't really mention that specifically um, so you know I'm fine with leaving that there as long as we felt that it wouldn't be confusing having made that decision um, you know budget oversight is definitely something that the road commissioner will will be doing especially in helping us with the uh, annual right. town highway budget um, right I didn't I feel imagine... it was been oh go ahead sorry no go ahead Go ahead. So, so um, since it doesn't specifically say, because uh, payroll is a major portion of the budget, it would be make sense that he had, at least is overseeing that to some degree. Although yeah. the other description is going to say that individual paychecks would be signed uh, by the road foreman. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, that's not intended to be confusing, but I would want wouldn't want to leave payroll out of it. You know what I'm saying? I I agree. Yeah. Yeah. I would I would imagine that way. If the road commissioner sees an issue with what was going on. He's got some oversight and can step in and say, hey, I've got these issues. Uh, yeah. I want to bring it to the select board's yeah. attention. Okay. So, that was um, my process. Yeah. So I would say with, with this um, job description that if we just add the assisting the um, select board in the preparation of the annual town highway budget and either strike number six totally or just um, amend it somehow, um, that it's pretty much good to go from my point. And again, I didn't, I didn't want to make this specific to the person we have now either. Right. You get what I'm saying? Uh huh. Um, I, okay. Well then, um, then what we could do is uh, leave that in and, you know, we've obviously discussed and talked about how it would work um, with Chuck as the road commissioner for, right. for the time. Yeah, okay. And I'll add in the line about assisting the select board with creation of the budget. Okay. Okay. So, um, with that am amendment, um, we could either wait till the next meeting to approve it or, you know, with the understanding that you that you'll add that part, um, we could approve it tonight. I, I'm fine with however um, you and Brian feel about you know, I, think I would think we might want to adopt it just so we have something to work with because a document okay. may change in the future anyway as we see the right. needs change or as we realize issues we may have created or you know you know the law of unintended consequences. Yes, yeah. Okay, um, would you like uh, to make a motion to that effect? Sure, I'll, I'll uh, make a motion that we adopt the uh, uh, road commissioner's job description as amended in this meeting. I'll second okay. that. All in favor? Aye. 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 And Good. I'll get copies okay. out to people by tomorrow or Wednesday with that update. Okay. Okay. And again, this to me was with the understanding that if we have to make some changes down the road, we can still do that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So um, moving on to the road foreman um, job description, I, I made some changes to that and I sent them to you both. Um, and we could go over those very briefly. If there are any, are there any questions at all that, that um, Paul or Brian that you have with the changes that I put in there into the road form and description? Yeah, hold one second. I thought I'd opened it and apparently I had it, so stand by here. Okay, yeah, I've got it in front of me on my other computer. Um, yeah, I didn't see anything myself, but. Okay. Yeah, I don't see any issues, Michael. I, I, I just wanted to reread it real quickly. So yes, I'm good with that. Yep. Okay. Um, all right. So um, why don't we, I guess we sh should make a motion to adopt, adopt the um, road form and job description um, with the present changes um, to going forward. I'll make that motion. All right. Uh, I'll, I'll second, second it. Okay, Brian second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. All right. So, so we've got those two job descriptions down. Um, let's see. Next on the agenda is um, the used 4900 purchase. And Chuck, um, you want to just share with us um, 
what happened with that and just for the public record for for those folks that will be watching the the meeting yeah um can you hear me now yes yeah. yeah i can hear you okay uh yeah you gentlemen voted to purchase the truck we went down friday picked up the low pro at charlie boys stopped back by picked up the 4900 uh, run it down the road, checked the transmission, and made sure it shifted good and everything. And uh, Peter said that it drove pretty good on the way home. Wanders a little bit, but we knew it needed tires on the front, so I'm assuming that's what the problem is. Um, it seemed to go well. We settled on the price of 5500 and that's what we did. And I handed the paperwork on it to Brandy today. Yeah. So she's got the title, uh, the bill of sale everything to transfer the uh, registration. I had to put insurance on it before we went after it. And I think I saw you go by with it last week. It looked like a pretty good truck. It's yeah, it's a pretty good old truck. I, uh, I think it's going to work out well. Good. Mm -hmm. So, and, and the thought is to set it up with uh, for the chloride for the rest of the summer and then get it, get it set up for uh, as a backup for winter plowing. Yes. Yeah, it's got a plow frame on it now. We got to take the wing tower off because we're not going to put a wing on it. But it's got a plow frame on it. Uh, there's hydraulics enough there to adapt to it for the power to make the power angle plow work. And um, we have the tailgate sander that's on the 4900 that was wrecked that will go on to that. And we've got to change tires around, like I said. And there's a few small things. There's a couple, there's a few excuse me three or four lights that are out you know it's just small stuff but yeah, they need to be taken stuff. care of so i'm thinking within hopefully a week or so we'll have the chloride tank in it mm -hmm. and then it will be um set up for a backup plow truck great anything else at all um no not as far as the 4900 i guess okay so well, why don't we move on to the um excavator repair that you've been working on okay well there's more to that than the the truck <laughs> <laughs> yeah i've got three, i've got three quotes for the groundwork on the excavator all three are complete uh complete groundwork uh, yeah. Chains, pads, rolls, uh, no, excuse me, chains, bolts, sprockets, uh, idlers, all the rollers, top rollers. Um, and I have three quotes. One is uh, from Peach Repair, is $10,367.68. And one is from Molly's out in Pennsylvania, that is $8,640. And then we have one from Jordan Equipment that actually Greg got for me. That is $6,788.42 for everything we need. Okay. Now, is that parts only, Chuck, and the labor we do or that labor? The labor, the labor we're, Greg and I talked about it. They can do the labor, they claim. So, okay. And I thought maybe uh, I'd run it by you guys, but there's a cylinder on that leaking. I thought maybe I'd see you about getting Tim McClay back up there for the day they're doing that and fix that cylinder at the same time. Okay. I'm good with that. I am as well. Uh, so this he, firm that's, that's far away, would they send a mechanic here to do that? No, 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 none of them, none of them included the mechanic. That's just parts. Oh, that's just parts. That's not parts yeah. and labor. No. Just parts. Okay. Just parts. Okay. And Quite with a big Tim difference, McClay, Chuck. What's that? Why the big difference in the parts prices? It's a good question. I, I uh, um, Jordan's is aftermarket, and Pete's at ten thousand three hundred sixty-seven dollars was factory. Okay. From uh, from uh, Terex. Yeah. But um, these aftermarket chains are just as good as the Terex chains are. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So which bid do you recommend, Chuck? I 
uh, recommend Jordan's equipment at $6,788.42. Okay. Now, so who would do the actual work? Would, would uh, Tim McClay do the work? He, I want, I, I wanted to bring it up to you guys tonight, thinking that uh -huh. it would be a good idea if he was there. I don't think it'll take much over a day. And like I said, there's a hydraulic cylinder that's leaking that he should, re he should re fix that. I mean, we should hire him to fix that. And uh, okay. I just thought it'd be a good idea if he was there just to kind of oversee it because that's what he's done for the last 25 years. I'm yeah. in agreement with that. So who's yeah, going to do so, the work on it? So would the road crew be doing the work? Yes. Oh, okay. All right. Oh, really? Okay. Yes. Which, and I think it's a good idea because uh, having Tim there would be offset another person too. Right. 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 Yeah, and, and it would just have, have his insight while it's, things are happening too. Right. And uh, hopefully we could keep the downtime down to a minimum of a day or maybe a day and a half. So Brandy, have we got the finances for that or would we need to pay that out of the uh, capital reserve? Your mic's off. Let's see here. We could also just pay budget. for it out of the insurance money we didn't spend too. Right. right. Yeah. Don't spend all that yet. <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> and I, I, think we did budget, I think we did budget some money for the excavator for fiscal year 21, knowing that we were going to be doing yeah. some repair work on it. I mean, it needs to be done. It doesn't sound like it can be put off. That's why I'm just asking as no, long yeah, as we well, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the fiscal year 21 budget to see what we budgeted for that. I don't think we budgeted that amount, but so we have some of the money. Yeah. So for this fiscal year, we budgeted 2,500, and the same for next fiscal year is 2,500. Okay. Okay. So we've got, um, and we, how much have we spent on the excavator? $351 so far. Okay. So, so we do have, we have basically $5,000 um, budgeted. We spent 300 of that. So it's obviously not going to cover. It'll, it'll come close to that or over 50 percent anyway so we would have to just do some transfer either from the capital reserve or from our insurance fund right yeah because we got to yeah do or just, or know, just, just have it go over find... within the highway over on the excavator right and and Usually it balances out. We've It'll never... balance out the following year because we'll be done with the repairs. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll Good. we'll figure out where the the extra money is going to come from when we get there. I think whether we have the money left over in the fiscal year twenty budget that we can. Is your plan or... to get it done this fiscal year or in July? Uh, that's Chuck. a that's a answer for Chuck. Um. If I'd had my druthers, I'd rather order the parts yeah. tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. He, he's going to walk out of one of those tracks. Them tracks, the, every link in them. They're really loose. The They're bad. So, so bad, Chuck, bad. If you, Chuck, if you ordered the parts, uh, you know, we've got, what, three, four weeks left in the fiscal year. Uh, how long do you think it would take for the parts to come from, from uh, Jordan's? I would guess probably two weeks. Two weeks. Okay, so we're getting close to the end. Yeah. Um, so what we could do is, um, you know, obviously order the parts tomorrow or as soon as possible. Um, yeah. And, um, you know, we're, we're getting so close to the fiscal year, we could just see if they would be willing to um, take payment for it after the after July 1st. Yep. Well, that was the payment within 30 days, Chuck, or do we have to pay when we order? Does it say? Um, limited one. Jordan's is usually 30 days. Usually 30 days, yeah. yeah. Usually they send an invoice. So we, we, we would be pretty much safely into the new yeah. fiscal year. Yep. Yeah, I would think. Um, yeah. yeah. It says here on the, on the quote that lead time will be one and a half to two weeks. So okay. 
it wouldn't surprise me if it could get into the third week with no problem. Yeah, and then they'll invoice us and we'll have some time to, okay. Should have 30 days after the invoice. Should, yeah. Yeah. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Um, Brandy, couldn't you write a check for the $2,500 that's left in this year's in FY20 that hasn't been spent, even if we don't give it a, you know, pay it out until after July 1st? No, oh, yeah, I can do a, I can do a, a payment. Them in yeah, we could. Yeah, we don't, I don't see why you couldn't. Yeah. Otherwise, sure July 1st, money. some that money's kind of you know, gone. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good idea. And so, um, how should we proceed on this? I mean, obviously, we want to do this. I'll, I'll make a motion if you'd like, Michael. Okay. So I'll make a motion that we, is it Jordan, Chuck? Yes. Jordan. So I'll make equipment. a motion that we hire Jordan equipment for what's the amount? Um, for the parts, it's six thousand seven hundred and eighty-eight dollars and forty-two cents. Okay, you got that number for that amount to order the parts and also hire Tim McClay for a day to assist with assembling the machine, and that'll include uh, repair of a leaky cylinder too. We'll be approving that. Yes. Okay. Um, Look at that. The last time he worked for us, he worked nine hours, and it was three hundred and twelve dollars. Yeah, that was a bargain. Well, yeah. That, yeah. It, it'll be the same, roughly the same this time, I'm sure. That, that's a bargain. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So um, all those in favor of the mo the motion? Aye. Aye. Say aye. 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 Okay, sounds unanimous to me on yeah. the phone here. <laughs> um, good, good. Well, that's, that's in motion then. Um, so the Valley Lake Road, work so, um i just put the, i put that on the agenda because chuck mentioned something about um getting some cement blocks for um the driveway into the school parking area and i just thought maybe it would be good for us to to just discuss um what's going to be happening there um again i you know i'm pretty doubtful that that better roads grant yeah. that we put an application for is that 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 will um either not get awarded the grant or the grant award will come, you know, uh, October 1st, you know, it's, everything yep. is just on hold as far as any of that right. stuff um, is going on. Um, so I, I think, you know, my understanding of the plan with, without that grant was that we would, um, and Chuck has explained a little bit to me of his thinking on it and um, is that we would lower the road, um, and eliminate the swale, um, you know, in front of the annex building, and, and that we would also slope the road to the opposite side of the road um, from the annex building. You know, the, the crown and slope would, would go towards um, Ron's Langevin's side of the road, um, and that we would also try to change the um, entryway into the school parking lot so that water doesn't run um, from the parking area down. Um, along the side of the annex building or into the annex building. Is, does that sound pretty much ballpark on what you're thinking or what are what are your thoughts, Chuck, on what to do to try to remedy that, the flooding in the annex building? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, Paul and I talked on oh, Terrible with Days. I think it was Thursday. It was Wednesday, last Thursday, Thursday, I think. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And we decided to put some blocks in to raise that side up and keep the water from going down over the bank and make it go as much to that culvert across the, the driveway as we could. And then yeah. we'll just have to shape it up and take some gravel out of beside the food shelf bay mm -hmm. and get that shaped up. And we'll, then we'll just have to keep an eye on it and keep it clean. Yeah. Okay. So and for some context, we did hire an engineer to design that road for our future paving needs. And um, the, that plan should be in the next couple of weeks. He's been behind because of the COVID. He's been having to work two days a week and watch kids three days a week, so he's behind. Uh, but what Chuck's talking about is in line with what the engineer was planning to do. He was talking about reconfiguring that driveway, sloping the road the other way. So 
his plan is going to also include before we were to pave it at some point in the future, digging down and putting in uh, geotextile fabric and things like right. that. But obviously the exactly. culvert problem came up. So that's another hurdle we got across before working on that. So I think Chuck's proposal is a good proposal for an interim fix. Yep, I, sounds good to me too. And I, and I can add a little bit more um, to the culvert. And this seems like a good time to do that. Um, so uh, last last week, I think it was last week, yeah, June 2nd, um, Shauna Clifford, the VTrans uh, District 7 um, project manager, and um, uh, Pat, oh, I'm blanking out on the fellow's name, the ANR stream engineer, met with us in the in the village. We, you know, we looked at the Buck Lake Brook where the old store was, uh, but we also looked at the three culverts um, for the Kingsbury branch, um, the two in the village on Valley Lake Road and um, Church Street and, and the, up the brook a little bit further on Bailey Bridge Road. And um, when they looked at the culvert um, under that goes under Valley Lake Road, they definitely, um, that definitely needs to be replaced. And Shauna was going to send me the paperwork for um, uh, uh, engineering design work for a box culvert for there. Um, that's what we would have to replace it with. Um, I haven't received that yet, but I'll send her a reminder to send that to me. And she seemed to feel that the money would be available to the town for the engineering design. Um, and then in the course of the conversation, you know, she asked me who, who we had done design work um, like that in the past, and I, I mentioned um, the fellow's name who did the Nelson Pond Road box culvert design, um, Doug. Um, Newton. Again, can you remember his name, Brian? Is it Doug Newton? Doug Newton. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. I had the Doug part, but not. <laughs> and um, and then I mentioned that we had um, a civil engineer from um, Tim Ruggles' business in St. Jay there, looking, you know, working on a design for the the erosion water runoff from the road in and the driveways in that area and both Shauna and um, the fellow the ANR um, engineer Patrick Ross there it is mentioned that they think very highly of um, Ruggles to um, so when we get this um, you know grant application for design um, we might want to um, when we put it out to bid um, Definitely, I think um, contacting uh, Ruggles um, would be a good idea because they're already familiar with the, the area where we're working. And, um, and yep, that's he definitely fine. got highly recommended by uh, both Shauna and Patrick. So, Are we going to do both of the culverts in the village? No. Um, I, let, me, let, me, yeah, let me finish up. Um, the Church Street, apparently um, here, when Harry... Daly was the road foreman. That culvert did get replaced. That one's in fine shape. Oh, the one the one up on the Bailey Bridge Road is is not in the greatest shape, but um, there um, it's not a it's not anything that we need to worry about in the immediate future. Um, That's good. And Shauna also re they both remembered that there was a hydraulic study done for that culvert in. Um, 2013 which she sent to me and and that one would also when when it comes time to replace it would would require a box culvert yeah and ruggles is the engineer that's doing the road design too exactly so you know if, yeah. if we need to have a box culvert design for that spot it it kind of makes sense um you know depending on what we get for uh, responses to the rfps for that that um you know they're already familiar with the the site um, so yeah well, well I guess we'll cross that bridge when we get there but um so I should be getting some information about the grant application um, from that's from perfect the yeah we probably should press forward with that so we could get that road taken care of at some point exactly yeah so well you know if we can get the engineering uh, get a grant for it get that yep. done let's say by spring of next year, maybe, um, you know, then we of course have to put out another grant application to, to for the funding of it, but. Um, Correct. So, so yeah, so that's just a little bit of a follow-up on that, on the culvert there. Okay. 
So, Michael, should we take a break for the bid opening? We're supposed to do that at 6.30. Yeah, um, yeah, it is. Yeah, let's let's do that. Let's stop um, with the town highway report and, and go to the village paving. I don't know if Diana has anybody there at, at the office. No. Okay. Uh, you can't see me, but you can probably hear. I can hear you. I can hear opening. you tearing open those bids. Yes. So for the bid rule opening, we were just going to announce the name and the price. That's all we were going to announce, and then we were supposed to deliberate at another meeting. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's, that's the best thing to do. No. So this first one I've opened is from ST Paving, contact name Paul Lawson. Um, 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 hmm. Asphalt paving is two sections, paving and excavation and grading. The total, grand total is $52,540. Ouch. Ouch, okay. <laughs> and here we go. My non-formal comment. This one is from Green Mountain Paving and Steel Coating. Uh, East Berry, contact name Dustin Comstock. And Dana comes oh. And their total is $40,800. Okay. And that's including pavement removal? Excavate all pavement, place crusher run gravel as needed, and compact $7,500. Then pave two and a half base course type two, one and one half top course type four, $111 per ton, 300 tons is $33,300. Okay, so total price $40,800. And scan these and send them off to all of you so you can. Okay, that would be them. awesome. That'd be great. Okay. So, so Michael, the bid uh, package says we would award the bid by this Friday. So we need to set up a special meeting for us to go over this. Okay. Um, when would we, when would it work for you and and Brian? I have um, tomorrow is a, a pretty much an open day for me. Um, Wednesday morning um, or Thursday afternoon. Those are two. So I have a ten to eleven tomorrow. Uh, okay. Other than that, I'm good. All right. How, how about you, Brian? Sometime. How about eight o'clock tomorrow morning? Can we do it with less than 24 hours? Oh, shoot. I forgot about that part. Uh, yes. Yeah, so, um, so obviously, if I were to warn it um, first thing tomorrow morning, we couldn't meet until um, we could do Wednesday morning or we could do Thursday afternoon. So right now, Wednesday morning would work for me right now. Okay. Yeah, I'm fine. And how about you're good with that, Brian? Yeah. What what time? I see Wednesday morning. Yeah, I'm fine any time on Wednesday morning. You good in the morning, first thing, Paul? Yeah. Let me grab my other book here so I don't lie. Okay. And did we only have two book. beds on this? We only, yeah, just two beds. Just two. Okay. Yeah. I think. And I think yes, Wednesday morning, what time, Michael? Any any time is fine with me. Eight o'clock? Eight o'clock, okay. Where? Yep. So I'll warn this tonight. Um, hopefully it'll get on Front Porch Forum for first thing in the morning, and I'll have it posted in town, um, you know, probably first thing tomorrow morning. Where will it be? Uh, let's see. Let's do the town hall. Yeah. Okay. That'll work. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Right. And then what we'll do is we'll come out of the meeting and we'll announce the winner. Yeah. We'll 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 open the meeting, start the meeting, go into executive session, deliberate on the and review the two different um, bids. Yeah, we'll have the um, bids with us there. Yes. Well, well, yeah, and D Diana's going to send us. Uh, that's right. She's going to scan them and send them to us too. Yeah. 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 Um. Yeah, and then we'll, you know, we'll, we'll deliberate the two bids um, and then come out of executive session, open the meeting back up and um, and make a, 
make the, make the announcement. And then the bid proposals would be public record there, not public record until we've awarded one of the bids. Yes, exactly. Should I uh, send a copy to Chuck too, so he can? Yeah. Yes. Sure. Yes, that's one of his duties. Yep. Yep. I don't have an email for him yet. Uh, oh. I think I sent it to you, Diana. But um, I, Chuck, do you mind if I just tell Diana's your your email address over? Yeah, in go ahead. Meeting? Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. So it's no problem. Okay, it's CB, and you correct me if I'm wrong. CB, CB is in Chuck. Yeah, small case letters, CB, 27, Quarry Road, at gmail.com. Okay. Okay. Prepared for all kinds of mail. <laughs> Thanks. Um, so it, it seems like we've pretty much, oh, I do have one question about the paving on the village common area. Um, I'm wondering if we should consider the um, the removal of the swale that's, you know, tight to the, the fire station and, and between the post office. Should we try to have that just be a flat area? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna talk to the winning bidder about reducing that some because it's very difficult to plow. You see the plows digging yeah. in. Yeah. Yeah. We can't completely get rid of it, but it, it could be reduced so it's not so prominent. Okay. All right. That area fills up with six or ten inches of slush every winter and freezes and is a horrible mess. So Yeah. Yeah. And and the you know, the swale directing the the stormwater um, right into the stream is another thing that we're gonna have to have to yeah. deal with. Yeah, and I think some of that work would have to be accomplished with the road crew because there's a stump to remove there. I think we could flatten that area out and give a nice grassy area for the water to run across before it uh, goes okay. into the brook. Okay, so- Yeah, that could be made quite a lot better there by the back yeah. of the fire station. Okay, yeah. so we'll, we'll kind of look at that and think about that a little bit too. For we probably have to accomplish some of that work. Uh, you know, if they had to bring in a little additional fill, it might cost us some extra. So we'll have to work that out with the winning bidder. Yeah. Okay. But I know the work on the lawn we could do with the road crew, I'm quite certain. Okay. There's a stump that's all rot, and they can pull it right out with the loader, and that could be smoothed right out, pull the pavement yeah. up that's in there. Yeah. Okay. Can I ask a question? Sure. Um, is the paving going to go all the way to the post office? Yes. And... And who's, who owns that land, and are they going to pay for part of it? Uh, I I'm not sure who actually owns land. We were anticipating paying for all of the pavement. Thank you. Okay. Um, anything else about the, the paving at all? Okay. Um, so... Um, Back to the town highway report. So first um, thing on that, um, oh. we should probably update the orange or the yellow sheet with Chuck's name on it. Yeah. Yes. Because I, I have one, but it's not on there. So if someone, I don't know who does that, but we should update that and the town website with Chuck's address, uh, email and phone number. Yeah. I can do okay. it if somebody sends it to me. Okay. So oh, I, I can, Laura, I can send you email address and phone number. You can make changes to that town official contact sheet and and also to post it on the website. That'd be great. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. So um, back to Valley Lake Road. <laughs> okay. Did did we? Was there anything more to talk about with Valley Lake Road? So I think uh, I'm okay if you needed to buy those blocks. You know what the cost is, Chuck? Oh, your mic's locked on again. There we go. You're back. Okay. Yeah, uh, I called... SD Ireland today and uh, 10 blocks delivered at the Woodbury School. The blocks are $50 a piece. 
So the box will be 500 and it's $350 delivery charge. I think we need him to do that. The water stop running in the building. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's basically the only way you're going to stop it. Um, yeah. I had, I met Grizz there with Rick Grader on Thursday, I guess it was, Paul and I were talking, and he finally come along with the grader, and we sloped the road from up in the middle of the hill to the Ronnie Langevin side of the road. So any water that lands in the road above that big white rock will go into the ditch on Ronnie's side, and um, I cleaned the ditches all the way down through there, right by the, right by the culvert under the guardrails on the fire station side, that's about three inches too high right there. So the water, if there is any water in that swale, it ain't gonna get into the brook. Now, I don't know if that's the way it's been planned to keep the water, to slow the water down going into the brook or what, but. Yeah, that's all part of the design that this fellow from uh, Ruggles is working on. Okay. Uh -huh. So I, I, my opinion for now would be to get the water off the road and we'll move forward with the plan once we have it. But for the interim, get the water off the road. Doesn't that make sense? Hey, Michael's back. I'm back for the, we'll see how long it lasts, but here I am. <laughs> he stoked up the wood fired internet. There you go. <laughs> I got my hammer out. Wham. <laughs> yeah, we definitely need to get the water off the road. Um, mm -hmm. I'm probably going to take that on myself with my excavator um i worked over there four hours the other day i didn't charge the town no I, I won't charge them for this part that we're going to do here but as much as far behind the road crew is on charity hill and other places that i don't see them having time to do it and we'll just stockpile the material that you're hauling out of there yeah i'm going to put it up at the um, schoolhouse okay so that I can grade that driveway we have to put them blocks in and get that side high I'm gonna to have to have some gravel to grade yeah, in there. Okay. So I'm, okay. I'm thinking I'm gonna use it all right there if not we definitely will take it back to the town garage yeah but that's right. my thought right now okay Good. so I'll, I'll make a motion for the $850 for the blocks and to get the road work done there I'll second that um, I'll, one I'll thing think Go ahead, One thing Chuck. I probably should mention is two of them blocks are for fixing the road down by Mike Gray's and one over on the Wilbur Road. So sure. Okay. No issue. Good. Okay. Yeah. Long as you know. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Gotta have it. You gotta have it. That's right. it. Yeah. Anything else about the work there um, down at the bottom of Valley Lake Road in the village? Sounds like we have a plan. Okay. Yeah. Um, so um, next on the agenda in the town highway. We should report. vote on that, Michael. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought we I thought we did. All no, those in okay. favor of of um, the plan that we've been discussing uh, and the expenditures um, for the bottom of Valley Lake Road in the village, um, please indicate um, by voting aye. 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 Okay. So sounds like we're good. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for reminding I mean, me. I'll, I'll turn over those uh, plans once we get them. We can start taking a look at the road. I think they're going to go on that road some more, but I think we just do as little as we need to to get the problem solved for now, and right. that way we don't have to do it twice. Because that, I know the next plan is going to be digging all that material up down a couple three feet and putting in fabric. So the fabric and stuff. Yeah. Okay. Getting ready so, to pave. Okay. So the the next thing on the agenda. Um, is the town roads and bridges standards. It's kind of a yearly process that we go through to um, um, just basically designate that we are doing the road work um, in the town based on the on the standards, state standards. Um, and these changed um, the last time that the, the VTrans has a record of us um, adopting the roads and bridges standards is 2013. I'm pretty sure that we adopted the new version last year, but um, Shauna, I thought Clifford we did too. <laughs> yeah, Shauna Clifford didn't have a record of it, so we'll just do it again. But basically in 2019, um, the standards changed um, to reflect the standards that were established in the 
municipal roads general permit. Um, so it's, you know, we've been working to those standards for a number of years now, um, even, you know, when they first were beginning to be formed and discussed uh, by different towns. So um, I, I think I sent everybody a copy of the standards. Yeah. And so I guess what I would, um, what I would like us to do as a select board is, you know, I have, I have a paper copy here that I can fill out. Um, and sign, um, or you know, we could do that. We could actually, I could have it filled out, and we could review it um, at our uh, special Wednesday. meeting. Sure. Otherwise, why don't we do that? Because then, then we'll all have a copy, and we can actually sign it. Actually, sign it. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's pretty pretty basic, and um, you know, I'm pretty sure that we we uh, signed this. Um, and adopted it last year, but for some reason it's not in the VTrans records. And Chuck, uh, I know for your part, you were wondering what those standards were, the municipal roads general permit standards. Yes. And the, st the standards that are in this uh, document um, are basically the, the, especially with all of the road stuff, um, town highway stuff, those are basically the municipal roads general permit standards. So that'll right. give you a good, good indication of, of, uh, the and, and Chuck, are you be at the meeting on Wednesday also? I can be. Probably should be. All right. Yeah. That's eight o'clock Wednesday morning. Eight o'clock at the Wednesday town hall. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'll be there. Okay. All right. So let's um, let's review this uh, Wednesday morning, and um, and then we'll sign it and and vote to approve it. Okay. okay. Or vote to approve it and then sign it. And then sign it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um. So Chuck, do you have any other uh, town highway road maintenance updates that you'd like to share with us? Um, back to the Valley Lake Road. We okay. started at the Dog Pond Road uh, with the grader and the bucket loader and cleaned the berms and the ditches and put some gravel in by uh, Arthur Orlandi's old house, uh, Orlandi Road at the foot of the hill. And we put a load in by Tyler DeVos and one at the end of Wheeler Hill. And then we honed the whole length. Um, I had them reshape the corner up on Winston's Hill. And they took a dump truck with a half a load of uh, gravel on it and rolled that in before they put the chloride on it. And lo and behold, it's holding good. Uh, I come up through there tonight and it's actually still fairly decent mm -hmm. and uh, but um, from Winston's house to Dog Pond Road the, the ditches are clean the culverts are clean uh, and the road looks good mm -hmm. I'm happy good. With boys them. doing a good job yeah they did yeah. they did and I also okay. contacted BJ about that ditch he had over in front of his house and Worked with him two three days, and we he's got that cleaned up. So uh, they hydroceded it today. Yeah, Perfect. I think it's in pretty good shape. Um, looks a lot better. It, yeah, I was there. Much. Been by there a couple times. It does look better. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I've had two requests from campers in East Long Pond. Mm -hmm. Class four road up there has got a culvert that I guess collapsed last winter and somebody dug it out. Now they got a deep, deep swale, water bar, whatever you want to call it there. Huh. And they're looking to have a culvert put in there. Okay. Yeah, we're, town is responsible for culverts on class four roads, yes. so, no. Well, yeah. I told them all under run by you guys before I just went ahead and did mm -hmm. it, so. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's mm -hmm. fine. Yeah. Here, here's the run by. <laughs> okay, all right. Okay. <laughs> yeah, well. Go ahead. And uh, okay, and all the roads are in pretty good shape. We've had some nice comments on the internet, and that's good. Yeah, I've seen that too. Yep. Yep. I feel pretty good about what they're doing. Mm -hmm. um, most of the time, I'd like them to do just a little bit more than they do do, but they're <laughs> getting headed down the right road, maybe. Yeah. And I guess that's about all I got. Okay. 
Okay, um, well that pretty much um, concludes the um, town highway report, which is probably a, a good part of what's on our agenda for this meeting. Um, so uh, looks like we're ready for the town treasurer report. Hi there. Hey Brandy. Hey. Okay, so over the last two weeks, I took in um, revenue totaling $1,340.40. Um, within that was fleet permits. We had a reimbursement from VLCT for the fire department for removing a vehicle. Um, library donations, records restoration, copies, land recordings, a marriage license, and zoning permits. Um, as far as delinquencies taking in, I took in um, $649 over the last two weeks. Um, as far as transfers, I have done totaling 32,000 covering um, today's AP and um, payroll. So over the next few weeks, um, getting prepared for the new fiscal year, closing out and um, making sure everybody's um, gonna finish getting paid off for their stipends um, and then starting new binders for the next fiscal year. So financial statements, I did not get to scanning yours, Paul. Okay. Um, I do have copies left at the office. Uh, Michael had come in to sign off on bills. Um, so those are all down there to go through. And so payroll and AP's down there, okay. Yep. Okay. Any other questions? No. Okay, so um, hearing no questions, um, let's move on to the next uh, agenda item, the town clerk's report. Okay, let's see. Okay, am I, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, uh, I was just emailing you those things. So, okay, we have the lift contract, which I sent around to you today. It's something we sign every three years. It's for 36, 36 months. Uh, we've done it twice since, since I've been here. Um, uh, $350 says. Yeah, 350 I believe. Yep. Okay. Uh, Try to get them to come in June so it always falls, you know, in the same fiscal year so we don't have two in one year. Uh, there's another uh, another contract or another contractor that actually uh, comes and does the inspection for the state certification. But we pay for that too, but that's not in this one. So I just wanted to know if you want to sign it or if you want to just authorize me to sign it. Um, you, it seems like you've always, we've yeah. always authorized you to sign it in the past. I signed the last one, yeah. Yeah, um, I'm Good fine with that. Okay. Okay. So I could make a motion that we authorize our town clerk, um, Diana Peduzzi, to sign the uh, three-year contract uh, for the lift, town office lift. I'll, I'll second that. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So it uh, looks like I'm gonna be needing a new computer because mine has been doing some really scary you things lately. You broke your lately. computer. Huh? It's that you broke yeah. your computer. <laughs> I did, oh, last week it started screaming at me. Like oh boy. Keeping it. Well, I usually the one that scream at mine, so. <laughs> Skip said that that means something's going dead in there. So um, he had warned that these computers are reaching the end of their useful life. So we we scheduled uh, when we did the budget, we planned for like one a year, and we still have almost a thousand dollars left in the budget for this year. So Skip says he can order it and have it. Uh, 
uh, so that the payment can be made in this fiscal year. It will be between eight and eight hundred and a thousand dollars for a medium to high level machine. Um, the uh, difference depends on whether we have Microsoft Office as a license or whether we have to buy a whole other Microsoft Office. But he's going to come down tomorrow and figure that out. Okay. So uh, I don't need any permission on that. I just thought I'd say hi, Michael. Yeah, I'm back. So, um, and this is this is Skip Marcasani that Diana is talking about. He's kind of the town office IT um, person. Yeah, he does a wonderful job for us for no no compensation. He'll he'll order it on his account, so we'll get a good price, and then he just invoices to Brandy, and he'll do all the work of converting everything from one machine to the other, and and it's a, it's a really good resource. Saves us a lot of money. So um, I wanted to report on some more complaints. There's another complaint from Westwood Berry about ATV traffic. That's the second one we've had recently. Yeah, I just got a call about that today also. Yeah. I don't know if it's from and the same And there was a second complaint about Bryn Paul and the mess that he's creating up there on his property. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's, also, well, also, a, well, yeah, anyway, never mind that one. Uh, Alex Diego out on Country Road, count, yeah, County Road, there's a complaint that he's been storing cars uh, possibly in a wetland area. Mm -hmm. um, skip. Diana, Skip Marcasani called me about that um, this past weekend, and he mentioned that there are a couple of property owners uh, near where this fellow lives, Alex Diego, that are putting together a letter to, to uh, pre present to the select board. So uh -huh. we'll be getting something a little bit more formal about that soon. Okay, good. You know, uh, people just sometimes hesitate to complain by name because they're afraid of the people that are in their neighborhood. That, mm -hmm. but I'm glad somebody's willing to put their name on something. There's also uh, Melvin Beam right in the village who has a, a huge collection right near the highway, right, you know, you can see it quite obviously. Trucks, tires, a bunch of ATVs, other junk. But we do have, in our zoning ordinance, it does say that miscellaneous junk and unregistered vehicles should be screened from public view, but our zoning administrator doesn't exactly jump on these types of complaints, but I just thought I'd mention it to you all. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of towns are considering junk ordinances. Hope we never have to go there, but sometimes just a letter telling somebody that they're in violation of zoning that mm -hmm. might help. Yeah. I, I guess that is something that we should um, maybe discuss in the in the near future. It does there does seem to be a number of sites in Woodbury and West Woodbury um, where this you know we have been receiving complaints, and um, I guess it's something that we should probably address uh, in the near future. Um, I could add it to the agenda for our next select board meeting. Um, I know in one problem that we had a few years ago, our zoning administrator did work some with the property owner and then um, eventually um, the uh, enforcement compliance and enforcement wing of the ANR um, got involved at this site um, and they were actually able to instigate some changes there. Um, but I think my, in my opinion, often the town is sort of helpless in dealing with this stuff. We don't have much teeth to, to try to enforce anything. Uh, the state seems to have a little bit more um, power in that way. But um, so. But also, we, oh, go ahead. Also, have complaints about on the Ainsworth Road property that we still don't know. It hasn't 
I mean, I haven't got any paper that shows who the new owner is, but already there are complaints about junk vehicles parked behind that little house. Yeah, yeah. And I know the person from a &R did, is aware of what's happening at that site, but in, um, there really isn't much that that person can do um, until somebody is actually living there. Right. That's what I was told. Oh, it doesn't make sense. Okay. <laughs> but they're yeah, well, planning, a, if, the, if the environmental enforcement officer came out because someone complained that there was a poor sewage disposal system or something, unless it's hooked up to water and somebody's actually using it, you can't tell if it works or not. So right. that's why I couldn't, couldn't say much. That, right. was one of, that was one of the things that I was told, yeah. Mm. It, it looks like there was work on the house and then it's, and now it's sort of just stopped, but there are, mm. are a number, I haven't driven up the road to see how many vehicles, but when I drive by on Route 14, I can see it couple three that are that obviously don't look like they're being driven every day <laughs> okay so let's move on okay um, I'm gonna have to schedule a board of abatement hearing for sometime this month so we can get a couple of things cleaned up uh, within the uh, fiscal year uh, I have a request one request from a person it came in a few months ago and I didn't deal with it but now I'm, I'm gonna wasn't a good time to do it but this is a better time and there's also the matter of the past due taxes on the uh, Woodbury former Woodbury country store site which the town the select board agreed to pay the back taxes that was part of our agreement with the sellers way back when way back. And I did get to pay fifteen hundred dollars of it and uh, but there's still two hundred and thirty two dollars owed from 2018 and I don't know why the listers are still billing them for 2019 because as of the time that we took the title in November they should have stopped billing Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the town is now the owner and the town is tax exempt, so I'm going to have to talk to the tax collector about that. Okay. Would, would, Make it would the town agree to, to pay those taxes, and uh, we just need to go through the process to get them off the books formally. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, that, I'm thinking maybe uh, the 23rd of June, which is if I get the notice out this week, that gives enough time for. Mm -hmm. the board of Tax Abatement is made up of the Select Board <coughs> and the five Justices of the Peace and the Listers mm -hmm. and the Treasurer and the Clerk. So, and you deal. have two different two different um, property owners that we would be meeting with. No, just one. Just one. And, and okay. But the other one is just to clean up the town payment of the back taxes on the FEMA site. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, that, so that it can come out of the budget and go into the tax collectors, basically one pocket to another. Mm -hmm. Okay. And would that be an evening meeting probably? Yes. Okay. Anything else? Not until we get to the next subject. <laughs> okay, well, shall we move on to the next subject? Any any questions well, for, for Diana about the town clerk's report? I'm good. I'm good. Okay, guess we can move on. Well, you went to you can talk about the site visit, I guess, or you and Brian were there. Yeah. Um, would you like me to do that? You can tell Paul what you, you know, what okay. you saw. Okay. So um, last Tuesday when Shauna Clifford and Patrick Ross came to Woodbury, um, we looked at the, the Buck Lake Brook, um, you know, where the old store was, and particularly, you know, mostly just to talk about what to do with the stream bank. Um, 
and um, you know, I think, and you know, it's pretty much in the purview of Patrick Ross as a stream engineer to for that that part of the discussion. Um, you know, and he was okay with it the way it is. Um, we did re he did recognize that there is a bit of a bottleneck up towards where the the back of the store building and, and was, um, and you know he he recommended that if we wanted to try to just improve on the aesthetics of the stream bank, because it is kind of a hodgepodge of rock and um, there are some granite blocks, is that we um, put granite blocks along the stream bank, um, probably digging some of the bank away and and placing them so that they're, they're sort of stepped where the, the there would be the base granite blocks and then, um, you know, the next level would be stepped back a little bit. So the, the bank kind of sloped uh, outward from the brook bed as, as we did it. And, you know, of course we thought of the Swenson Quarry and the abundance of granite blocks that they have there. Um, so it's, it was, you know, the, that was kind of the thinking to, to, if we wanted to do something to, for the aesthetics of the stream bank beyond what it is. And that would also remove the, the constricted area um, up towards the where the back of the building was. Um, so that would, you know, um, Diana has mentioned that there might be some stream restoration money available. Um, I don't know if, if she's looked into that a little bit more. Somebody mentioned that to her. You know, this would be something that would take some planning and. Um, and then probably trying to find the money for um, obviously probably would be need need to be some kind of design plan created. Um, so it's it's something to think about in, into the future. Um, uh, yeah, that's pretty much the impression that I got. Was Patrick didn't think that there was anything wrong with with the way it is now. Right. But if we decide to put some money into prettying it up, he's said that he would help us do a quick, uh, you know, he'd come back and look at it and right, see if we need to get a permit. But, but the one thing I want to remind everybody is that we can't do anything there until FEMA does their final site visit. And right. that could be a couple more months. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, this definitely, the stream bank restoration definitely won't happen uh, mm -hmm. in the next couple of months. No. For mm -hmm. sure. Well, yeah. Peter Peltz had mentioned that he knew a, of a guy over in Marshfield or um, Cabot, I forget. His name was Kyle Foster that was a real artist when it comes to restoring stream banks. And so I emailed Peter today. I said, Who, what's, what was that guy you mentioned? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so he, Peter went ahead and called him and uh -huh. uh, said he was going to call Brian and talk about, but I had to, just sent them both an email reminding them not to, do anything quick. And as far as the money goes, like Shauna said, they're going to uh, apply for a flood grant, flood mm -hmm. restoration grant like the one we already have, and we would have to do the same thing if we want more money from FEMA. So that's right. That would take a long time. Yeah, I but would like to, some, oh. you know, oh. it'd be nice to not have to go the FEMA route again, but no, <laughs> that, that would be my choice. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I won't and, live long. I won't live long enough for that. Right. Shauna did mention that VTrans is a will be applying for a FEMA grant for the uh, the two culverts that go under Route 14 to you know to try to remove yeah. remove those and put one culvert in place. Probably again a, a cement box culvert. A box culvert. So, and they're just at the beginning stages of that FEMA grant. So we can probably anticipate that it'll be at least four or five or six years. Before, 15 years. Or 15 years before <laughs> VTrans has any, you know, has extra money, extra money or, or receives a FEMA grant to, to make the uh, change there. And, and the reason that they're going that route is that for them, for the for VTrans, you know, those two culverts are not um, uh, an issue for them. They're they're fine. They're in good shape. There's nothing, you know, as far as uh, the physical um, status of the culverts, 
they, they'll last for a long, long time. So this change would be um, more to accommodate the town's wishes in a way. Um, and it's not as much of an issue now for for them or for us now that we can actually see what's happening with those two culverts. Because you know where the where the division is is definitely a spot where debris can get caught. Uh, but now we can actually see without having to crawl underneath there what, what's happening yeah. there. So that's exactly so. my thought is that, that once it got opened up and you could see uh, that it's not as much of a problem as it used to be, that it would go down on their priorities list. I mean, it's great that they agreed to do it because mm -hmm. it helped with our grant application and they were all for it, but mm -hmm. you know, it's not part, it's not part of the grant. Right. It was just an indication that another state agency was interested in having it all done. And yeah, and I, but I think you know from what Shauna said that VTrans is pursuing making that change. It's just not going to happen. You know, rolls her eyes when she says that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then Chuck had an idea of um, putting in a, a, some cement kind of if you look at the two culverts um you know one of them is a cement culvert and the other has a cement header on it of of, of bringing that that head those headers for those two culverts raising it up uh, <coughs> 12 10 inches um, and having it go extend out beyond the two culverts to help uh stop the erosion that's now happening with the gravel on the on the side of the side of route 14 um, which um, we all thought, uh, Patrick Ross included, was a was a good idea. So that that might be something that the town could pursue at some point in time. Um, did, maybe did, and maybe even a little kind of curve or a little lift that right. wouldn't right. tie the guardrail, but it would be a little something mm -hmm. to uh, maybe help cars from flying over there. Yeah, yeah. I think there should be like an eight-inch curb there. Enough so that if the car get up against it, it would have to stay. Yeah. <laughs> that would be good. <laughs> yeah. But uh, again, so that, that, whether that could be done, and FEMA might not even notice if that was done, but you know, but I don't know how much money you're thinking it might cost. Yeah. And, and uh, Sean, I did, go ahead, go ahead, Chuck. That would be very cheap. I, you know, I, I, I'd have to check the price of concrete and a little bit of steel and and uh, but I would think five six hundred bucks you'd get out of that. Uh huh. So that could just That's be part bad. of the just the uh, final restoration project. project you know. Yeah, yeah. When the other know. work, other landscaping work is done, and Shauna mentioned that he felt that that was beyond the right of way for Route 14, so we wouldn't need to get a permit to do that. I, I think I'm remembering her saying that. Uh, we wouldn't need a permit to work alongside the road. She still wanted to look at a, the, the plan that we had. I don't know that it involved a permit, but she right. wanted to know what was going on. Yeah. And right. we, wouldn't need a, we wouldn't need a permit to work there because it's far enough away from the travel portion of the road. Right. Well, if it's in the right of way at all, you need a permit. But if it's not yeah. in the right of way, that's I think she felt it was beyond the right of way. But yeah, we can, uh, yeah. we'll check in with her about that. Yeah, yeah if that's so something I, you want to do, if if you decide that's something you want to do, that that wouldn't be a big deal at all. Okay. Who decides that? Uh, <laughs> well, maybe maybe um. I mean, we could decide it right now. I think it's a good idea. Um, mm -hmm. It definitely will keep the, uh, I mean, it was obvious when we were there on Tuesday that there is uh, gravel and stuff um, running down from either side of the, uh, the culverts into the stream. Um, so, and then having that curb would also designate, um, you know, where the culverts are and, and help prevent anybody from accidentally driving into the stream, uh, you know, unless they're going 60 miles an hour through town and, and fall asleep or something and head for it. But, um, what kind of a curb are you planning on? A little cement one or granite or? Concrete, I think. 
Concrete? Yeah, concrete. I, I would do it in concrete. You know, we could face it with, uh, probably could find a thin skin cut from uh, Swinston and, and face it with granite if, if you wanted. Mm -hmm. But I would do it in concrete and we're gonna have to leave an opening for the water to get off the road and back into the brook there, but mm -hmm. it sh should be below the curb so mm -hmm. that the water could actually travel through there. Mm -hmm. But um, it depends on how much time you want to spend on it and how much money you want to put in it, you know? Why don't you make a proposal? What's I mean, that? Come up with, why don't you come up with some numbers and then they can look at it again? Well, if that's what you folks decide to do, that's what I'll do. That, that sounds like a plan. Yeah, why don't okay. just... It doesn't have to be elaborate, just um, you know, kind of what you've just shared tonight and um, and then we'll we'll look at it again at, at uh, another select board meeting and, and decide on that. Okay, yeah, I'll work on it. I guess that's probably the best thing to do anyway yeah. because that particular Look, decision wasn't warned for this correct. meeting anyway, so. And she wanted to see, she wanted to okay the plan of whatever we were gonna do before we did it too. So. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so we'll, we'll, we can send it on to Shauna too. Yeah, I'll draw something up. It okay. won't be real fancy, but. Doesn't That's have perfect. to be all thing. Yep. Okay. You know, and then if I can give you Shauna's email address if you'd like, or you could send it to me and I could send it on to her. E either way would be. Whatever you want to do. If you don't want to okay. be involved in it, I'll just send, I'll get it from you when I get it drawn up and we'll, I'll okay. give you a call and get it and we'll do it. Okay, sounds good. All right. Anything else okay, so, for the? Yep, two more things. Uh, two more final things. request for uh, reimbursement has gone in and is being processed. Mm -hmm. Went back and forth a couple of times with more information needed, but uh, we should be coming out with pretty close to uh, what the money is available. We have to kick in a couple thousand more dollars, but mm -hmm. otherwise, It'll be 75%. And then there's that boundary line agreement with the uh, fire department. Mm -hmm. right. We have uh, Lisa Jeanette had written up uh, proposed language for our boundary line adjustment. So I've sent that to Chris Green asking him if he can make that into a little legal document that we can, that both sides can sign. It's not really a transfer of any land, it's just you know, confirming that the line isn't right where you would have thought it was. Everybody always kind of thought it went straight back from from the power pole, but it doesn't. It goes off at an angle. Mm -hmm. um, so once we get that uh, agreement signed, then A&R can close out one of the grant programs that they had, had us in that uh, paid for the survey. Mm -hmm. no. Okay. So, okay. so we're waiting for Chris to to come up with a document that the fire department um, can and the town right. can look look at. Okay. Right. Yeah, we'll pass that because Chance would have to sign that. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. That's all I've got. All right. Thank you. Any any questions at all for Diana on the on the the no FEMA no. Okay. So um, next on the agenda is a discussion about um, a town constable. Um, Gary is interested in the position. Um, I've been trying to find information uh, for him to, and, and for the select board, just to have a better understanding of, um, you know, the town constable position. Um, and uh, there isn't much um, that I've found. Um, I, I did find a, on the um, a website on the uh, Vermont Criminal Justice Training Council has a description of uh, uh, responsibilities um, that a town constable um, ha can have. It's a, pretty much up to the town to to um, uh, list almost like a job description what those. Um, responsibilities would be. And, and it's my understanding that there are three, perhaps four levels of training. Um, and of course, with each level of training, there are more uh, 
things that a constable can do. Um, and, you know, for if, a, if we would want to have a constable that could actually do any type of enforcement, they would have to basically go through police training to do that. Um, right. So, so I thought I'd just, um, you know, Gary, if you could share with us what your thoughts are, what you're, you know, in, in a town constable, what, what are you thinking um, that, that you would, I guess, like to do, or do you want the select board and yourself to, you know, for us to kind of have a series of discussions to figure out what, what we would have you do or. Um, well, I was, I was just kind of feeling it out to see what the expectations were and what, you know, what the town was looking for. Um, okay. Obviously I, I don't have the, uh, the criminal back, you know, criminal training or criminal justice training. Um, right. But it's, it's a matter of knowing, I, I don't know exactly what the town's looking for for that position. I, obviously I know it hasn't been filled for many years and I, I don't know exactly what the expectations are. You know, I, I don't, I don't have any expectations. Um, I haven't really thought about it um, at all. I don't know if Brian and Paul have any thoughts, um, but that's something that we could discuss. We could, you know, we could work on this. Yeah, we should um, probably look around at what the league may have. You probably already looked there or what other towns that do have a constable. I think Wolcott maybe, I don't know, might have right. one. Right. I know, um, Back when I was first on the select board, maybe about a year after being on, the select board went through a series of discussions with different law enforcement agencies, the state police, the Washington County Sheriff. Um, we discussed the constable issue. Um, you know, we and it, there's a, a series of select board minutes for those discussions. I think one of the things that we were worried about with a constable position, especially if they were, wanted to um, to do enforcement um, is that we, you know, there's very poor coverage. We we were worried that a constable might be get into a situation out on one of the back roads, call for backup, and not be able to get a hold of anyone. Right. Well, that's right. that's been an issue in the past because the state police won't take on any other agency. So finding a way, if right. you don't have cell coverage, that's a that's a challenge for us. Yeah. So yeah. How you keep track of if this person goes out. That being said, you know, uh, the rest of we got like our zoning people go out. I go out as the fire warden and the fire chief and we don't have that. So, so it, it's not a huge stopping point, but it might limit what we want, how much confrontation we might, might, might want someone getting right. into. And, right. I mean, in this day and age, you know, you don't know what to expect of any scenario. Right. Like that. I mean, I, I get right. that. And, and that's not necessarily where I was looking. I mean, I, I, exactly. I've been to town now here for, I don't know, probably, 13 years I think we've been here now um and I, I it might be more of a a point of contact that's why I created the website I did on Facebook sure, for, yep. you know for to, to spread information or you know to share information um whether it's you know a, a break in at somebody's house I mean just to, to for spreading knowledge you know I mean to share knowledge and maybe you know at, at one point I, I had a meeting with the Washington County Sheriff's to uh, start a neighborhood watch in Woodbury, uh -huh. but I I got limited involvement with other people, and I you know I kind of backed off on it. That was like two years ago, but uh -huh. you know I, I I would like to see something like that in Woodbury, and I it doesn't necessarily require that position, but I just thought it'd be a good contact point, you know, uh -huh. or or you know, in other other duties that aren't necessarily law enforcement that that position could could entail. All right, that's um, a good idea. Yeah. So what I what I did um, a few days ago was I typed in Constable Information Vermont, and this um, website for the Vermont Criminal Justice Training Council came up, and there is a listing um, there of um, different powers that a, a constable can have, mm -hmm. um, and then and then the state statutes that that list that. Um, you know, you know, part of the list is. Uh, serve civil or criminal process, destroy animals, kill injured deer, assist, assist the health officer in discharge of his or her duties, um, serve as a district court officer, um, evict unruly um, members at a select board meeting or a town meeting, um, you know, different things like That'd that. That's a great thing to do right now. It's all virtual. <laughs> <to do. laughs> yeah, well, Leaf can do that by just uh, Shut somebody off. Whoever's whoever's being obnoxious. So, 
Um, so, and then, you know, as, as the responsibilities get more involved, um, those, those are the different levels. And I did um, ask, I seems like I remember when we were doing this that VLCT had this nice small booklet or, or uh, like a document that they had put together, but they, I can't find it in my computer and, and they, you know, I asked them about this and they just sent me back a bunch of state statutes to look at. Um, yeah, I, I went to their website and looked through some of the stuff that they had on it, but it, it, yeah. it's it's real general and, and you know, there's not any specifics. And, and again, I didn't know what, you know, what you guys were looking for in that position. So, I mean, it's, it, yeah. it, it's kind of a blind, blind thing at this point. I, I don't know what you're looking for versus, you know, what, what I can actually do. Yeah, I mean, I don't think we know what we're looking for. Like you said, it's been a position that's been empty for a number of years. And, you know, I don't know, maybe Brian and Paul remember when we did have a constable, what, what they were involved in. And that in. varied quite a bit over time. Yeah, yeah with different people. Yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah, I don't, um, personally, I'm not looking for a constable because the duties overlap into the state police and the sheriff's department. And those guys have all said that they don't want to cover backup for us if the right. constable's out doing something. They mm -hmm. just, they can't do it. You know, they can't well, that, guarantee that they could come help him if he gets in trouble. So yeah, mm -hmm. that would that would be all of the you know, the enf enforcement part of which is definitely a higher level. And if we had a constable that was doing that, and and I would get I would also recommend that we not have that. I mean, right. you would have to basically. It, it go sounds like Gary's working more toward like uh, organizing and someone to call, and we might be able to work something like that out. Yeah. So more of a public yeah. public relations type thing would yeah. be for crime or you know mm -hmm. as a you know I I'm just throwing that out there. I mean I you know yeah. I, 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 like have, I have I have I have background and I've done a lot of security work and I've done uh, I used to be a private investigator so I mean I've done a lot of different things in that line of work but I mean mm -hmm. I've never done anything you know in line of a constable but I do have background in in uh, doing research and security and stuff. Okay. So. What, what would you like to have happen, Gary? Should, would you like to kind of continue this discussion with the select board? We could, we could think about it on our own um, and just see what we could come up with or? Um... Yeah, I mean, if, if there's something that, not necessarily the title of a constable, but maybe there's something else that could still work together with that same result as far as, you know, helping out the public with, you know getting you know getting resources for getting things done you know like you know i heard a couple of things you were talking about today i mean just just a contact person maybe to carry through with you know some of the complaints people have mm -hmm. okay okay all right so let's do um, some okay. research <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. okay yeah alice yeah. has a con they do okay oh. so okay maybe yeah actually I've spoken with a callous constable before. Um, it was a, and I think I did it during that policing kind of research that we were doing. Um, he had some good insights and I was actually kind of curious to know if, if he would be interested in being Woodbury's uh, constable too at that point in time. Or we can copy what they're doing and implement it here right. if it works for us. Yeah, he was pretty much at a basic level and he didn't, you know, he did not want to, uh, do any of the police training to get right, any enforcing yeah. Yeah. But yeah yeah I don't think Gary's a, interested in that either yeah no he I mean was, I you know for for my personal reasons I mean I've done I've done you know I've done the firearms training all that on the police for you know police course and all that in New Hampshire I was firearms trained in New Hampshire so I mean I I I know how to use use a weapon but I, I don't think I want to go that route right okay. if it if it's the same person I think I might have his name and contact information in um It'd be great to get that job description and see see if it's something we would want to look at. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's really what I'm looking for is what you know what what the town's looking for and and, and if it fits into something I can do. I mean, you okay. know, I'm I'm looking for that type of thing to do on a on a part time basis. Okay, so um, maybe what we could do is try to to find out what what other towns have for a constable, what what the duties are, and you know, mm -hmm. kind of getting those templates of what other neighboring towns, towns of a similar size to us have and, and uh, just as food for thought for what, for what we might want to have. 
Um, yeah, I mean, another another set of eyes and ears in the town. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. and, and a resource to, to communicate with other people about. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And maybe other people in town will have some ideas too. I know, sure. you know, I, you see things on front posted on front porch forum and probably on the on the Facebook page that you started, Gary. Um, different concerns that people have. Right. Um, so, okay. So to be continued, I guess. All right. Yeah. Absolutely. Lovely. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Thanks, Gary. So, uh, last thing on the. Um, the uh, agenda is the personnel policy. Um, you know, we've been working on that. And at our last meeting, um, there were some obvious things that we still felt um, we wanted to, to work on some more. Um, and some of the things that I was remembering was that uh, from our last meeting is, uh, you know, just a, a form, a vacation request form. Um, and Brandy came up with um, a form that seemed to be the perfect perfect thing. Um, yeah, I've got it up on the screen there. Yeah, I'm going to get it up on the screen too here. Um, it's simple. It's one page and it pretty much has everything that we would want, I think. Um, That's the employee time off request form? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Okay. So the only thing I could think of to add to this is, is, is maybe putting some kind of lead time for time off because I don't think anyone's objecting too much about a day here, a day there, but uh, I think there's been some issues with time, like a week or two off, just being dropped on you today or, or yeah. Or, right. So, so one of the places I looked around uh, suggested a day for day. Um, so if you wanted a five days off, you'd have to get it approved five days before. If you wanted 10 days off, you'd have to get it approved 10 days before and so on. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. And that, sounds, it approved, that sounds like a good taking it. Right. So that, you know, they, and, and, and approved means, it's been requested and signed off yes. before that time so that so that the uh, us as the you know the road commissioner and us as a board know when the employees are going to be gone and it's not kind of dropped yet that obviously doesn't contemplate a sick day or emergency time if a family member was was ill or something so i'm talking about vacation time right mm -hmm. that sounds like a good a good way to break it break it down so that would if, if we were in agreement that would morph into the person We'd have to add that language into our personnel policy. Yeah, we would. Yep. The need for this form and then the, the parameters to request the time off. Yep, and I, I can add that language to the personnel policy. Get Does that, that make sense to the other members? And yeah, Chuck there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, it makes yeah. sense to me. Okay. Day for day, basically. So you got to, sure. you know, two, two weeks, you got to give us uh, Two weeks, the minimum, minimum of two weeks. To, to, Correct. To well, it's got to be approved yeah. by that two weeks before you want to go. Right. Yep. yep. Yeah. Okay. It's only right. twenty. If it's only one day, it's only got to be twenty-four hours. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. One day is. Yeah, not a big issue. issue. Right. 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 But. When and you obviously, get two weeks, if, it's, the if it's an emergency or something Correct. like that, we're, of course, yeah. that doesn't contemplate. There's other things in the policy talks about an emergency leave. This right. is mostly for vacation times. For vacation time, yeah. So I'll you know, I'll I'll put that language in the in that section um, that that uh, covers vacation time. Okay. Um, so, anything else about the the request form at all, and and the language in the personnel policy? I'm good with that part. Yeah. Good with that. Good. Okay. So um, I know that there. Um, is a question right at the moment, and I know it's come up in the past um, for payment in lieu of vacation. Um, Brandy, did Diana once take payment in, in lieu of vacation that, that she had acc accrued? Seems like I remember you mentioning that that, that um, Diana once requested. So up until two years ago, um, that's how it was. If you didn't that's use it, it you would get paid out at the end of the year because it never, we didn't have it so that it accrued. Accrued, okay. Um, so it was, it used to be in the policy, you could get paid out at the end of the fiscal year. If you didn't use it, then, then you could get you paid out. You had to get paid out. And I, and I asked to have it changed so that you could carry it forward if you wanted to. Right. And so it's, that, that's why I kind of sent Michael some comments on this, that it seems like we got, we're kind of halfway in between the two systems right now, because it still says that you may. So to yeah. me, on a system where you're going to accrue, you would just carry your time forward up to your maximum you wouldn't pay out any leave time. Mm -hmm. So there, there's 
a question right at the moment where um, you know one of the rogue crew members has kind of maxed out the accrual. I think this is pr pretty much for vacation time, and is requesting payment for the 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 time of, um, that he will basically lose at the end of June um, because he's already reached the maximum for the accrual. Um, Right, and, and that's why I, I had sent you my comments regarding that yeah. for anybody, because because the way I know the system I'm in, once you hit your maximum, you just stop accruing. There's no payment for unused time. You just need to stay on top. You don't, uh, you know, keep, like I had to take a day off today, or I was going to lose time. That was an example. Okay. Yeah. For okay. myself. All right. Okay. Uh, the, problem, the problem is you never know how much you're going to have to pay out. That's the issue for us. Right. You know, we could have to write thousands of dollars worth of checks potentially if we go that route. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, what are you recommending, Paul? Well, uh, uh, my again, again, I didn't get into this deep last year, so I was I, I just started looking at it this year. Yeah. It would seem to me if you're going to have a, an accrued amount that you would just carry time forward continually. And then uh, Brandy and had a sheet where we were assigning the leave time. Um, per pay period so that you earned it in smaller increments so you could use it and not lose it. If you get makes sense, that's kind of where the state mm -hmm. system works. Mm -hmm. So you take the amount of time an employee gets and divide it over their, their number of paychecks. Um, and then they're assigned that much time every paycheck. That way, you know, if they earn six hours, they could use six hours and still earn it the next time if they were maxed out. Yeah. I know, I know Brandy was kind of trying to work that out and, and found it somewhat complicated okay. so i don't maybe brandy did you hear um the discussion that paul was just offering about the the leave time and the accrual and on a monthly basis it would be a weekly because i think our weekly pay cycle is weekly okay. yeah well i had done it in a monthly i did it um i divided it the chart that i had i don't know if i scanned it around to you guys um so one conflict with, that was brought up brought up with the road crew was that um, he has been consistently taking two weeks off in November for hunting, that that was going to be an issue um, because he wouldn't have his two weeks to take that off um, if we did it on a monthly accruing basis. Mm -hmm. So why change? Right now, do they... Does the uh, leave time just accrue at the beginning of the fiscal year? At the June yes. one, you get everything right now. I mean, I so would, I, I don't fair. do the books or keep track of it, but I, I, to me, that, that seems the simpler way. It, it is. What I, the problem we looked at before when we looked at this was that you, you either had to pay people for the time or they wouldn't earn any time if they hadn't used it. So. Right. I mean, I don't care if we do it that way as long as everyone's just aware of it. Because mm -hmm. I'm, I don't, I'm not in favor of paying for unused leave time because it's kind of not budgeted. Right. Yeah. Well. Okay. I think before I asked a few years ago to be able to accrue leave time, <laughs> annual leave time, it was required that you you had to be paid for it. You could be paid for it, and I asked would there be an option to either be paid for it or not be paid? So it seems like there still should be an option if people want to have the money instead of the leave time. That's my opinion. But, but the issue we have is, is saying we'd have to budget for each employee's maximum payout every year in case that was the, what they decided to do. I'm willing to go whatever the board wants to do, but yeah. we would have, in my view, we'd have to change how we're budgeting time because if that's what we're going to do, you could choose to say, I'm going to have 160 hours on June 30th and I want to be paid for it. Right. And if everybody did that, that's quite a payout. Uh, well, yeah. Um, I, I don't know how likely that is, but uh, I mean, it's not like we're going to have to pay somebody to fill in for the person who's taking a week off. They're still going to be their same amount of pay, same number of hours, same weekly paycheck. They just won't be working. Right. So I don't think be a big right, right. Effect. Well, the difference is it's already included in the budget. If someone were to say uh, twenty dollars an hour at one hundred and sixty dollars an hour that they want in June, that's not budgeted right now. Right. I think you know most of the time what happens is is that um, 
you know, it's not that the reaching the maximum number of hours accruing and, and then getting paid for it in one lump sum. It's more you get to the end of a fiscal year, you have a week of um, vacation that you haven't taken, so you just get paid for a week of vacation, um, and then and then you know, you start out fresh the next year, uh, accruing whatever your um, vacation time is that that's part of your um, benefit that you've earned for for the for the year um i mean i the okay i see that now you usually when you you know if you've accrued the maximum amount and the the issue for paying that out usually comes when somebody uh decides to uh cease working for the for the time right the only the only time i knew of getting paid for your leave time any place i've ever worked was when you left you didn't get paid for leave time unused at the end of a year. And because um, there's really, the, there's the accruing system where you earn it per month or per year, if you're doing it, or there's what they call a combined time off system where they give you so many days per year and you got to use them up during that year or you lose them. But I don't know of a system where they would say, oh, I didn't use four days. So I'm going to, I want to be paid for that. That's the issue I'm having with it. Right. Yeah. Because yeah. Well, for us, it's a, it's a bunch, it, in my mind, it's a bunch, because someone could just choose not to take any time off. And, and they would get quite a payout at the end of the year. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but it could happen. It would be wise to happen, budget right. for that. Yeah. I know, um, I think it's, is it personal time that doesn't accrue? Correct. Yeah. Correct. And personal time you lose. Sick time accrues up to... Uh, 140. Okay. Yeah. 120 Ooh. hours. 120, and then it just, you stop earning it. Yeah. And then, and then vacation vacation time accrues up to 160 hours for a full-time employee. Correct. The sick time yeah. is 240. 240, right. Mm, that's not what I have in, a, in my yeah, right here at the bottom, it says accumulated 240 hours. Oh, you're right, right. Time. Yeah. Right. And then you earn 120 hours per year. The yeah. full-time, yes. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah. So, so I, I mean, again, I, I'm, I just noticed this as a potential problem, so I don't care. Mm -hmm. If this is what everybody likes to do, I just think we would have to kind of change how we're budgeting and at least budget for some of that time. I'm not a big fan of doing it that way. Right. And, and as far as earning it at the beginning of the year, um, that's fine with me as long as, you know, we use it up that year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the, the problem has always been, especially for the road foreman, um, is, you know, finding a, a good time to actually take a vacation or to take um take the personal time um and you know greg has a our road foreman um at, at the moment um you know he does have this time for deer season which is pretty valuable to him and, and that's traditionally when he's taken it i know when harry daly was our road foreman we were always after him to take some time off because uh, he just um he had accrued a, uh, quite a bit um, and just never he never felt um, that there was a good opportunity for him to do that um, yeah. he likes to get paid so, for it too well that because it's a big bonus check at the end of the year if you don't use it right. yeah. But yeah. His, yeah yeah so I, like that one. I mean I'm just um, looking at, at overall cost if you if, if just in a per se if an employee worked all their hours and then mm -hmm. wanted their you know, 160 hours if it was a 12 year plus employee, or what does it come out? It maxes out at how much on the annual leave? Two. 160 um, is the vacation. Is the maximum. Okay. Yeah. You just understand my point. You'd have to write that check, and it's it's not budgeted right now. Right. Yeah. 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 So whatever we choose to do, it's just it would have a budgetary impact in my mind. Okay. Well, you know, I don't think I don't think that coming to a decision tonight is is gonna is the thing to do. I think we let's think about this for a little bit okay. more. And we'll I mean, I'm flexible enough. I don't care what the other two want to do. I just may want to make sure we budget right. or write the thing. And however, you know, you I, you've heard my opinion. I just think we yeah. should use it or not pay out. But if the others don't agree, that's fine with me too. We just got to budget for it. Yeah, and I, I'm not clear on. Budget. I'm not clear enough on it right at the moment to, sure. to think I could make a decision. So. I know. <laughs> That's okay. Too late, maybe, in the day. Um, <laughs> My brain's done, too. Yeah. Um, well, let's think about it. Um, 
and uh, we'll talk about it again next time. Okay, yeah, just cogitate on it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so let's see, I buried my agenda. Um, so, and you pretty much shared with us, Paul, the leave accrual plan for well, if, if we went that way, and it, you know, again, that's just an option. If people prefer to earn it, you know, I don't have a really strong opinion. I just, uh, I'm just trying to okay. fix the payout at the end of the year thing. Okay. So I know, I know Greg Parker's had a question about the vacation time that he has left. And I think it's some, some other sick time or whatever, Brandy, you had sent an email. He has personal time and he has vacation time. Um, right. And he would like to get paid out because he doesn't want to take any more time off between now and July 1st. So right. we don't pay out on personal time or sick time, it doesn't say in the policy. Right. Personal no. time is if you don't use it, you lose it. Correct. Right. Yeah. So, um, well, let's, let's think about the vacation time. How, how many hours is it, Brandy? It's 20 and a half. Okay, so we won't make a decision tonight, but um, we still have another meeting in June. Yep. So um, uh, that'll be part of what we what we can cogitate here from okay. now. And, 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 I, and we got to be fair too if we're going to make a change to this year because we hadn't contemplated this. So let's. Yeah. I yep. want to be fair. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's pretty much it on our agenda. Um, I did want to mention one thing, uh, another part of the meeting with uh, Shauna Clifford is that, um, you know, at that meeting, um, we, we went over the town highway budget, uh, which from that she develops how much VTRANS is, um, you know, gives the town towards <laughs> its town highway budget. So she came up with figures, um, and, but she mentioned to me that with what's happening with the, the state revenue, um, that there is a possibility that VTRANS won't be able to meet the amounts that she has sent to us. Um, and that would be true for every town if that happens. Um, yeah. So I think we should just be aware that, um, you know, there could be a budget shortfall for us in the town highway budget. Um, if VTRANS isn't able to to meet the um, the amounts that the, that are in the in the report that she just sent to us, did I send everybody a copy of that? I think you did. I did. Yeah. Okay. Um, so just something to keep in the back of our minds. I know a lot of towns, especially the bigger cities, municipalities, are really making contingency plans on a ten percent or twenty five percent shortfall in their revenue. I mean. Woodbury doesn't have a lot of businesses or restaurants no. or, you know, all of that. So our revenue is pretty, pretty simple. Um, but um, just, just something to keep in mind that, that the, we, we may find some shortfalls from VTRANS in the town highway uh, revenue uh, yeah. for fiscal year 21. Um, Any, oh, and just, um, I, you know, I know we had sort of planned on this meeting being in a physical space. Um, we were thinking of the school gym. Um, I couldn't just get it together enough with the supervisor union or with um, part of what we need to do um, if we're going to start doing that is provide a format for people who choose not to come to a physical meeting. Um, so we would have to um, come up with some way for them to access the meeting through a Zoom or, or whatever. Um, I um, mentioned this to Leaf and he thinks that there is a way that uh, HCTV can set up um, the town for um, a meeting in a physical place um, where people who might be uncomfortable with coming for, um, you know, because of the pandemic um, uh, could also access the meeting. So we're, we're working on that and I, I would like to, to have um, try to have the next meeting in a physical space. We were thinking of the school gym originally, but at this point in time, I think the town hall might be the best spot. Um, and the fire department has internet we could access there if we needed to use it. Okay, we would probably, yeah, we probably would need like a, a, a Wi-Fi connection or whatever. And then we actually set up our, our first meeting back together with the department. I think and we were able to measure our chairs and get them six feet apart. And we're able to have, I think, 15 or 16 people in the room there. So we'll probably have far less than that. 
Okay, yeah. and Di Diana mentioned that the Northern Rivers Land Trust held a meeting there um, also very recently and yeah. did the same thing, set up tables. So we successfully did it and I think we can too and if we need internet, we do have internet there. Yeah, okay. So we'll try to um, with least help um, and maybe our, our local yeah. IT folks um, will... will yeah, I'm, I'm not much help in that department, but... No, well, I'm, I'm thinking of our two skips and, and maybe yeah. Laura um, and Leaf because um, I'm not much help either in that. Hey, Paul. So, yes. Uh, what kind of internet do you have at the fire station? Do you know? Uh, we've got two different speeds. It's a good internet. It's cable. Yep. Okay. Um, well, if you had specs on that, that might help me know whether we could do a live broadcast or, or if we'd uh, have to depend on Zoom further. Okay. Um, so if you can email me, yep. um, I'll get the information that you need. It's okay. good, fast internet. It's right off the Comcast cable there. Yeah. Okay. I need I need numbers though. So I'll I'll email you. Yeah, because um, I I blah, I don't yeah, know. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Yeah. No problem. If, if people were still wanting to partake in the meeting and actually be able to answer questions and ask questions, wouldn't we still need something like Zoom for them to communicate that to us? That's what we're talking about. Is having yeah. Zoom available there. Yeah. That would that would be part of the meeting, yes. Or live stream, however we're going to do it. Again, I, I may yeah. get my words wrong, but. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I could do a uh, live stream if we had good internet. I could do a live stream to YouTube. It would be like a live broadcast of the meeting. And then I could put a phone number up on the screen where people could call in and ask questions to a certain number. Okay. Um, but that would be more internet dependent. Then yeah, so Zoom, get, then Zoom. get in touch with me and I'll get you the information you need. Okay, so okay. We, we would have to figure out some kind of phone connection because uh, uh, there isn't a phone in the town hall, so. No, we have one next door. We probably could get okay. it connected there. My cell phone works there too, so. Okay, all right, okay. So we'll figure it out. So that'll be the yep. plan for our, our um, next June meeting is to to meet in the town hall and, and work out some kind of um, connection for folks that want to participate but but uh, don't feel safe being in, in a physical setting with with other people no. any any other questions um i have a question okay Jack, i got your email wrong i tried it twice and i couldn't get it oh, okay uh, uh my email is actually uh she's got the quote Karen's got the quote on my phone there, um, but my uh, email is cb27 yeah. 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 Road at gmail.com. Yeah. Road as uh, R O A D or RD? No, R O A D spelled out. Try that too. Did she say it came through? Yeah, she just showed it to me here. Uh, I didn't look at it much, but. Do I, uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, it looks look like it came back, but okay. Uh, it does First, say forward and permit, permit. Right. She's got it, uh, she's got it printed off here for me. So she definitely oh. got it. All right. Okay. Thank you. Get it all printed. Cool. Diane, um, I, I have a, one of car, uh, Chuck's cards that he gave me. I'll leave it on your desk. I can drop some cards off down there. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, I guess the only th other thing I just want to be reassured about is to order the parts for the escalator tomorrow. Yes. yes. Okay. Yep. All right. Okay. Anything else at all? I'm good. I'm good. Okay. Yeah, go ahead, Andy. You your voice was breaking up a little bit just then, but yeah. Uh, Andy, try turning your video off. You might give you enough bandwidth to do so we can hear you. Yeah, your voice is breaking up. Still can't, still can't get it. Um. But you can't hear me. I I did that that I could hear you say, but you're. The only thing I wanted to say was um. Now you're coming in. Point, 
Now you're coming in very clear. Great. To your last point, I would like to be able to, to attend um, a lot of the select board meetings, but being that I turned 63 uh, last month, I am a little weary, even though I'm in relatively good health, uh, about attending in public. So I, I would really appreciate if there was a way that, um, you know, we can attend without having to be there in person. There's, there's no way that we would hold a meeting at this point in time where that wouldn't be a possibility. Correct. If, if, we, if that wasn't available to us, then we would go back to the Zoom meetings. Great. So. Thank you. Okay. Anything else at all from anybody? No. Nope. So who would like to make our favorite motion? Motion to adjourn. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.